We are now going to look at arguments. Now, this phrase argument doesn't mean a disagreement. When we talk about argument, we're talking about a sequence of statements. Now, if you're ha having an argument with somebody, and we're not talking disagreement, if you're arguing a point, you want to use logic to argue your point. You want to have a series of statements and make a conclusion. Now, we're going to look at this mathematically, but we will also use English examples just to get comfortable with the concept. So, if I have an argument, then all my statement, except the last one, is called the hypotheses. So, I'm saying this happens, this happens, this happens. Therefore, I can conclude that this is true. All right. So, that all the statements, except the last one, is the hypotheses, and that last statement is then the conclusion. Now, an argument is called valid if the conclusion is true whenever all the hypotheses are true. Now, being able to have a valid argument is very important, not only in mathematics, but in real life. Because very often we listen to somebody having an argument, and yet again, we're not talking about a disagreement, we're talking about arguing a point, but their basis is not true but they're making conclusions based on things that are not true or something like that. So it's very important to be able to lay out a logical argument properly and be able to know when your argument makes sense. So we're going to look at two language examples using English. Now remember, there's always a little bit of a leeway when we do things in English with mathematics. It's a much more, much more clear, but we're going to use this to help us get through this process. So, I've got two statements and a conclusion. My first statement is, if I go to the movies, I will not study for my exam. My second statement is, if I do not study for my exam, I will fail. Then my conclusion I make is, if I go to the movies, I'm going to fail. Now, let's just re refresh what an argument is. An argument is if I've got two statements that are true, the argument is valid if my conclusion is then also true. So that's what we need to test. If those two statements are true, will my conclusion be true? All right. Now, I'm just going to let A be the statement that I go to the movies. B be the statement I do not study for exams. And C is my statement I fail my exam. All right. So I'm going to write these statements mathematically. The first statement says A implies B. If I go to the movies, I will not study. I go to the movies. If I go to the movies, I will not study. So A implies B. And we know that's true because that's my hypothesis. The next one, if I do not study, I will fail. So B implies C. That's my next statement is true. So what we want to check is, is A implies C also true? Now, if we just use, because we're using English sentences here, if we just use our common sense, I go to the movies, I will not study. I do not study, I will fail. I'm saying, this means if I go to the movies, then I will fail. This is definitely true. Because I went to the movies, I know going to the movies means I won't study. I know if I don't study, I fail. So if I go to the movies, I will fail. But now let us see how we're going to do this mathematically. We're going to look at the statements A, B, and C. A implies B, B implies C, and we're going to check the truth value. Because we want this statement to be valid because it makes sense to us in terms of the scenario we've painted here. So we're going to draw a very big truth table. So let's take a look. I'm not going to fill it in step by step. I've already filled it in. You can pause it and f f make the whole truth table if you want to do that and practice your truth tables. But this is where we get to. This is my argument. A implies B is true. B implies C is true. Therefore, I want to conclude A implies C. I've set up the whole truth table here. So what this means, we need to look at the places where both of these are true. For the combinations of A and B, where are both A implies B and B implies C true? Here's one of those places. We call that a critical row. That's the row I need to look at. Another place where they both are true over here. That's a critical row. The next place is over here. That's a critical row. And then over here, I've got a critical row. 
So what I want to look at is what is the truth value of A implies C at the critical rows. Now I'm ignoring all the other rows because my argument says this has to be true, this has to be true. Let's see if we can conclude A implies C is true. A implies C in this critical row, true implies true, is true. All right. In this critical row, false implies true, is true. This critical row, false implies true, is true. False implies false is true. So what I've now done, I've looked at when A implies B and B implies C are both true, identified my critical rows, checked my conclusion in the critical rows. If my conclusion is true in every one of those critical rows, then my argument is valid. So I can conclude that this argument is valid. All right, let's look at another one. Similar story. If I watch TV, I will not finish my homework. So let's say we've got our what I'm watching TV. B not finish my homework. My next statement, so my first statement is A implies B, and I know it's true. My next statement, if I do not finish my homework, I will not pass. So C, I will not pass my test. So I'm told B implies C is true. Now, my conclusion is, if I do not pass my test, then I definitely watch TV. So my conclusion is C implies A. I don't pass my test means I had to have watched TV. Now, if we use the scenario and we think of a bit of common sense, could this be true? Well, I possibly watched TV, but something else could have happened. I could have woke up sick in the morning and not wrote the test, or I could have decided to just go shopping and not wrote the test and I failed. So this cannot be my conclusion. So this should not be a valid argument. But let's see mathematically how we're going to show whether this argument is valid. Because in the end, we're using these English sentences and the scenario, but we want to use mathematical statements and we want to prove it mathematically. So let's take a look at this whole setup. A implies B is true. B implies C is true. I want to look at A implies C. So we're going to follow, or C implies A, excuse me. We're going to follow the same process. Truth table, we look at where A implies B and B implies C are both true. Those are my critical rows. So here I've got my first critical row. Where both of them are true, I've got my next critical row, and so on. So my next step is to look at the truth value of C implies A in those critical rows. So let's look at the first one. C implies A. True implies true is true. I'm happy with that. True implies false is false. So that means there is at least one scenario where my conclusion is false, even though my hypothesis is true. So my argument is invalid. You don't even have to carry on, but for completeness, we can carry on. True implies false is again false. False implies false is true. So there's two cases where it's true, but there's definitely at least one case where my hypothesis is true, but my conclusion is false. So this argument is invalid. And that is how we test an argument to see if it's valid or not. We look at whether hypotheses are true and is the conclusion true. So let's do one more. Here's my argument. Now we've got no sentences. We've got no story. We only have the statements P and Q. I'm giving you my argument. So my hypothesis is P implies Q and P. So that means I'm telling you both of those are true. My conclusion is Q, meaning I'm saying Q has to be true. So let's see if that argument is valid. If P implies Q is true and P is true, it, can I conclude that Q has to be true? Well, let's set up our truth table. We've got P, we've got Q. P implies Q, we know is true, false, true, true. So we want to find our critical rows. So where are both of these true? P and P implies 2. So this is a critical row. Again, true, false, false, true. So I only have one critical row. So what I need to do is look at my conclusion in the critical row. Now my conclusion, I already have the column for my conclusion. Here it is. So Q is true where both of those are true. So my argument is valid. 
So what this means in terms of mathematical statements, if I know that I've got an implication that's true, and I know the first part of that implication is also true, then the conclusion of the implication has to be true. And that is it for arguments.